final point here. Look, I think if you go around the world, there is a great deal of interest in individual rights uh, almost everywhere. People care about rights, and I don't want to make light of that, but they don't care that much about rights in a lot of places. And they don't care that much about liberal democracy. Liberal democracy is not an easy sell in a lot of places. Go to Russia and say to you know, your average well-educated Russian or somebody even in the Russian foreign policy elite, what you need is liberal democracy. They'll look at you like you're nuts. And they'll say, we tried liberal democracy in the 1990s. It was the Wild West. We do not want to return to the 1990s. We don't need liberal democracy. Thank you. And we'll take Putin and his soft authoritarianism, despite its problems, every time over liberal democracy. Uh, so what this tells you is you're not selling an ideology or a political governing system that is that wildly attractive in all places. It's oftentimes a hard sell. And when you go into a country and you topple the regime and there's chaos all around you, people are mainly interested in security, not individual rights. Okay, liberal hegemony's future, and I'll conclude here. My argument is that liberal hegemony is finished. The United States, you want to always remember this, a ruthless great power. There are a few great powers in modern history that are as ruthless as the United States. We cover that up with liberal rhetoric, right? But we are ruthless, and that's not going to happen. Any country that invites one of those countries with a lot of power in the Europe or East Asia into the Western Hemisphere is really asking for trouble. Well, the Russians are the same as the Americans in this regard. They do not want Ukraine and Georgia turned into Western bulwarks. Very simple. By the way, Syria, you understand what happened in Syria. In 2011, when Assad's in trouble, the Americans, the Turks, the Saudis, the Qataris begin to move in and they begin to fund the insurgents, and they begin to fuel the insurgency, and they begin to try to topple Assad. By 2015, it looks like Assad is going under. What happens? The Russians come in. The Russians have a long-standing alliance with Syria. The Russians have a naval base in Syria. Surprise of surprises. The Russians decide they're going to prop up Assad. That's Realpolitik 101. And who succeeded? The Russians succeeded, and the Americans lost. Assad is going to remain in power. 